Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is gonna be all about growing succulents indoors. So let's go ahead and get started. So when it comes to growing succulents indoors, one of my first choices are Haworthias. Haworthias are really easy to care for and they can handle low light situations. And another good thing about Haworthias is they stay very compact and so they hold their really pretty kind of rosette shapes without stretching out too much, you know, without kind of getting that eviolated look. So Haworthia attenuata or the zebra plant is a really good one to grow inside. It's very easy to care for. Also this one, this is Haworthia symbiformis. It's got really thick fleshy leaves and has a really pretty rosette formation and also puts out a lot of pups. So these are both really easy to grow inside and they're widely available at most garden centers or nurseries. So these are just two examples of Haworthias that I grow inside my house, but there's so many more out there. So many different types of Haworthias you can grow inside, gaster aloes, regular types of aloe. There's also like the jade plant, the Crisula ovata. That's a really good one. They also call that the money plant or money tree that can grow inside and that can be a really cool looking one that can look like a little bonsai tree tree and there's also certain types of calanchos or calanchoes you can grow inside as well as certain aeoniums and the fairy castle cactus is a great one for growing inside because it's very low maintenance it's not super sensitive to being you know over or underwatered um, so it's a really great one to start out with especially if you're just getting into growing cacti and you want to have them inside the house and then here's an example of a succulent that is typically grown outdoors. This is the Euphorbia fire sticks. And when it's grown in full sun, it's gonna get really colorful. It'll get bright coral and peaches. It's really pretty. So that one is typically grown outdoors, but you can also grow this inside as long as you have enough bright indirect lighting. Um, but when you have it inside, it will turn all green rather than having those bright coral tips on it when it's grown out in the full sun. So it's just a good example of a succulent that can go either way and it's just going to change the color of it but as long as you don't mind that I actually really like when it's all green I think it's pretty both ways and so I'll just grow this back here on my desk or out on my coffee table or in a plant holder and it just has a really pretty sculptural kind of aesthetic to it Echeveries are definitely one of the most popular types of succulents because they have that really pretty rosette formation and they're absolutely gorgeous. They come in all different colors, but it's very tempting to want to grow them inside. Unfortunately, echeveries are very sensitive to light and they do need a lot of sunlight. So one tip that I recommend if you do want to try to get away with growing a true full sun succulent inside the house is definitely rotate your plants at least twice a week. So that way, if you are growing your Echeveria inside the house, say if I had it, you know, on my desk back here or something, then, you know, twice a week, I would go ahead and switch it out with another plant that I have growing outside. And also even within the Echeveria family, there are different ones that can grow inside easier than others. So like this green one here, this one can grow inside easier than some of the more colorful ones. So like the pastel gray ones, the ones that have a lot of natural white farina on them. The white farina is the powdery coating on the leaves that acts as a natural sunscreen. So the those have evolved to be able to handle a lot of sun and they do prefer getting out in the sun quite a lot. So I wouldn't try to grow one of these, you know, really pretty pastel gray ones inside the house because it'll definitely start getting uh, stretched out. Echeverias are really sensitive to etiolation and that's the stretching of the stem and they'll start kind of losing that really pretty tight rosette. So when you start to see that happening, you try to catch it beforehand, of course, but if you do start to see that happening, you'll know the problem. You'll know that they just need more sunlight. So think of sunlight as your succulents food. It needs enough of that food to stay healthy and vibrant and grow really well. So lighting is super important and if you keep them in a dark or dingy space then their health can definitely start declining pretty rapidly. So etiolation or stretching of the stem can happen to a lot of different types of succulents, especially if you have to overwinter them. If you're having to bring succulents that are normally outside inside for the winter to protect them from frost or whatnot, they can end up, you know, stretching out. And we can always talk about, you know, how we propagate those in another video, but you can definitely just, you know, chop off the tops, you know, where the rosette is still nice, chop that off, remove some extra leaves, and you can always, you know, let that callus over and repot it. But we can do that in another video. Um, but just a tip for the etiolation, just to keep an eye on that that's definitely a sign that your succulent is not receiving enough light another sign that your succulent isn't getting enough light is if its leaves start to kind of drop open and go flatter it shows it's trying to kind of catch more light so if it's not the type of succulent that can stretch its stem out then it's going to open its leaves up as wide as it can to catch more light
You want to choose a cactus on succulent soil. It's going to be grittier, it's going to be fast draining, and you can purchase just a commercial bag at any garden center or nursery, or you can mix up your own. I actually made a whole video on how I mix up my cactus and succulent mix, and so I will post that link down below if you want to check that out for more information and details. So for soil, you want it made for cactus and succulents. You want it to be super fast draining, nice and gritty so it doesn't hold too much water and cause root rot for your cactus or succulent. So anytime you're repotting succulents or cactus, you want to repot from dry soil into dry soil. And then don't water for a few days at least. I actually like to wait about a week before I water my succulents that have just been repotted. And the reason for that is because if you're repotting in, you know, from wet soil or into wet soil, or you water it right away, it has more chance of getting root rot. Um, so anytime you're repotting, roots are bound to break. So basically think of those broken roots as open wounds. And when it's in the soil, and it's wet and soggy, those wounds are more prone to getting bacteria in them, bacteria, <laughs> bacteria in them, and getting get like that root rot going, and that's not good. So it's always better to repot from dry soil into dry soil, and then give it, you know, a few days to a week before you go ahead and water. So one question I get from you guys pretty often is when to water and how much to water. So just to give you an idea of my watering schedule, basically I water my indoor succulents about once every two to three weeks, depending on you know how hot and dry it is. Usually it's pretty humid out here, so I don't have to water too often. The soil isn't drying out super quickly inside the house here. Definitely not as fast as they dry out when they're outside in all that you know fresh air all the time and the wind and the sunlight. That dries out a lot faster, so I definitely have to water my outdoor Door plants a lot more often than my indoor plants. So for watering, I water until there's water coming through the drainage hole. And that's another tip is make sure that your, your pot has a drainage hole, otherwise salts can build up in there and can end up with an unhealthy succulent over time. Now, in some cases you might have a terrarium, you know, maybe it's glass and there is no drainage hole. And so your succulent can grow in there for a long time and be pretty happy as long as you don't overwater it. So if you have a terrarium that has like just glass bottom and there's no drainage hole in it, I like to water with a syringe and you can find bigger syringes than this. I just already had this. So I'll kind of press it in because the sand tends to soak up a lot of water. So I try to get right under the sand to where it's going to hit down in the soil near the roots and I'll just go ahead and water that, you know, like three or four little syringes of water all around the base of the little agave. So when it comes to watering your succulents, you want the soil to be able to dry out in between waterings, not completely bone dry, but definitely let it dry out to the point of like a wrung out sponge. You can detect a little bit of moistness, but but definitely not wet, right? So you want to water when it gets to that point. It's better to, you know, if you're unsure, to just go ahead and skip watering until you're absolutely sure that it needs water. Because like I said, if it gets watered too much, that's the fastest way to kill it. It's okay if it misses a watering here or there. So being underwatered is better than being overwatered because at least you have a chance to, you know, plump it back up again. Once it gets that water, it's going to be looking fresh and, you know, beautiful and plump all over again. Whereas if it gets too much water, it's going to probably shrivel up, get mushy pretty quickly, get root rot, and it'll be a goner before you even know what's going on. If you can kind of get in the habit of just looking at your succulent and sort of getting to know it, they will give you signs of what's going on inside. So if you see a little bit of, say, like a little bit of wrinkling, maybe the leaves are, aren't looking quite as plump and full, that can be due to underwatering. So just for example, on an Echeveria, if its leaves start to kind of curl up and they're looking just a bit thinner than normal, then that can be due to underwatering. And if they start to get sort of like yellow and mushy, they can still have like a little bit of shriveling going on, but it's more like like a mushy kind of shriveling, especially down towards the bottom near the soil. So if you're seeing yellowing kind of mushy leaves, that can be due to overwatering. So your succulent will definitely kind of communicate to you in that way by what it looks like. It'll let you know what's going on. I've also gotten some questions from you guys about your succulents losing their leaves, and it is completely normal for your succulents to lose their lower leaves. So if you see like any of the very bottom leaves kind of, you know, shriveling up or drying up, then that's okay. That's totally normal for them to shed those lower leaves because because they're always producing new leaves from the top. So yeah, totally normal if your succulents are losing those lower leaves, you know, if they're just kind of slowly, you know, drying and shriveling um, and then dropping off, or if they're kind of still stuck on there and you just don't like the look of them, you can go ahead and pull those away too and just kind of 
of you know groom them under there so if you have lost a succulent don't feel bad just start again and try again and then once you realize like oh, okay now I know what happened to that succulent you know now I realize like maybe I overwatered it or something or maybe it wasn't getting enough light or a combination of the two that can really be like a major factor with killing succulents pretty quickly is the combination of not getting to dry out fast enough the soil not drying out so it's not getting enough light it's maybe in a dark location it's soil is staying wet for too long because of that it's not getting enough aeration and so again the soil isn't able to dry out fast enough and then it's getting overwatered so it's like that combination can kill a lot of succulents pretty quickly especially if they're growing indoors so keep that in mind but don't feel bad if you do lose a succulent it happens to all of us I know I've lost a few especially in the beginning when I was getting used to growing them and trying to learn about them but once you get the hang of it they're really cool plants and they're really fun to grow and they can be really cute you know decor pieces for inside your house as long as you choose the right ones and you're able to give them the right conditions that they need all right guys so those are my main tips for keeping your succulents happy and healthy and growing them indoors successfully um, so just a quick recap of what we went over so soil you want fast draining greedy soil greedier is gonna make the soil be very fast drain and so that way it's not gonna be retaining too much water if it retains too much water it's gonna cause a lot of sogginess and succulents don't like to have soggy feet so let that soil dry out in between waterings and then give them a good amount of water enough where it's gonna run through the bottom of the pots um, and then when it comes to lighting make sure they're getting enough light they're gonna let you know pretty quickly if they're not happy um, their health is gonna start to decline if they don't get enough light because remember that sunlight that bright light is their food and they need that photosynthesis to be healthy so soil light water aeration they need a good you know airflow happening that's also going to help the soil be able to dry out and not be like too soggy and too damp if you're in a humid condition you're not going to need to water as often if you're in a dry or very hot area you know climate then you may need to water them a little more often so try to avoid keeping any succulents in a dark or dingy area they're going to need at least a good amount of bright indirect light coming in on uh, if you do keep them on a windowsill for example if it's a sunny windowsill make sure that it's like only sunny during the morning time um, high noon sun and afternoon like hot afternoon sun can end up sunburning your succulents if they're still sitting in the window because the glass kind of magnifies that um, so I think that's all that I can think of for now guys if you have any more questions definitely let me know in the comments below or on Instagram and I will still compile like more of your questions into more videos and we can definitely do more succulent videos I know I got lots of questions about propagation so if you do want to see a video on propagating succulents then definitely let me know and we can do that in the future all right guys I'm gonna let you go thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video bye guys